In this video we're going to look at the Elegoo Penguin Bot 2. Now this is what I set out to buy when I got distracted onto the this other generic smart biped robot. And as I said when I was talking about the, this um, device, um, the Penguin Bot uses an Arduino. So it's basically programmed in C which isn't very user friendly if you want to m modify it. Uh, whereas this uses the BBC micro bit. The Penguin Bot comes in a rather nice box. Um, I've used Elegoo stuff quite a lot when I've been buying Arduinos. I've also got one of their cars to give away as a present. Very nice little manual, very clear on the instructions of how to put it together. Um, nicely packaged box, USB lead. Um, components organised into bags and then there are also some cardboard heads that go over the top including a blank one I think you can put in yourself and um, some bags of screws with which they give you spares of most things. Now it's important to realise that there are two versions of the Penguin Bot, the Penguin Bot 1 and the Penguin Bot 2. Uh, neither of them seem to be in stock in the UK at the moment. This one came from Amazon Italy and was about £45, I think, so about a third more than the generic bot over here. Um, this, so this is a Penguin Bot 2, the newer version, and it is phenomenally easier to put together than this generic one. Uh, it works on a very similar principle. It has two uh, foot servos that work at the ankle and two... Uh, servos at the top of the leg which work uh, the hips. So there are quite a low number of parts in the Penguin Bot 2 because the legs are all one part, the foot's another part and the body is probably about six parts. Uh, whereas this is lots of parts, the legs are probably about uh, six parts altogether per leg. Then you've got the servo arms to screw on and things. And that is in fact exactly how, from what I've seen on the internet, the Penguin Bot 1 was constructed. Also sort of flat laser cut acrylic panels which screwed together using this technique of the bolt going through like that, the nut. But this is a lot less robust than having that moulded in uh, one part. So Elegoo obviously decided, having made some sales, they would improve the design and injection mould everything and make it a lot stronger and easier to put together. Uh, the other difference between the, the differences between the Penguin Bot 1 and 2 are the control methods. On the Penguin Bot 1 it came with a con uh, remote control, a bit like the one for the generic robot, so it did have the buttons labelled with the functions. Uh, whereas the Penguin Bot 2 doesn't come with an infrared remote control capability, it works on a um, on Bluetooth and a mobile phone app. The other difference between the Penguin Bot 1 and 2 is the main circuit board, which on the Penguin Bot 1 seemed to incorporate the Arduino onto the circuit board as a bespoke design, whereas the Penguin Bot 2 has a plug on Arduino Nano, which you can see there, so you can remove that and potentially you could. Um, feed off some connections if you wanted to use the spare pins that aren't used on the Nano. Right, now I've got a bit of a problem filming the Penguin Bot doing anything while I'm controlling it with a mobile phone, because because I'm doing filming with a mobile phone and controlling the Penguin Bot with the remote control on the mobile phone, I have to run the apps in a sort of split screen mode, and I don't think either the camera or the Elegoo BLE tool app really like running split screen but I'll just show you now. So it's going forwards. It can turn left. It can go backwards. It can stop. I can't get it to the right hand button because it's hidden under other buttons on the app. Then there are various other buttons for things like dancing. and it has three different dances programmed into it. So if I press the dance button again, it will do a different dance. And 
hit the third dot. Whoops. And then it has some other things. It has a follow me mode. If I put my hand in front of it, it will move towards the hand using these infrared sensors. It also has an ultrasonic avoidance mode, so if it reaches, it'll turn around if there's something in front of it. And then it also has a uh, just an MP3 player mode. Now the music it's getting from a, a micro SD card, which you can just about see above my thumb there. Uh, and you can change the files on that to ones of your own if you want to. Also on the app, it has a mode for calibrating the servos, a bit like the mode on here where you press the A and B buttons, so you do it through the app. And that makes sure he's all lined up if he's not quite, uh, his servos aren't quite lined up properly. So I'm now going to try and do a side by side comparison. So if I press the forward button on the uh, generic robot and the forward button on the penguin bot, oh, I have to keep doing that on that because I've only got him programmed to do one step at a time. So you can see they're both moving in a similar sort of fashion, really. So here's just a couple of views of the um, mobile phone app, the BLE tool for the Penguin bot. And here's another view with the servo calibration mode open. So I'll just finish with a quick summary of the differences between the two robots. Um, so the <coughs> Penguin bot's about a third more expensive. It has a much more robust construction in this version 2 design. Version 1 was much more like this in terms of how the parts fitted together and the number of parts. Uh, the Penguin bot just works out of the box. I haven't tried doing any programming on it. That's just the default program. I will be rewriting it to reincorporate a infrared remote control feature, which they've removed from the Penguin Bot 2. Whereas the uh, generic robot is a real struggle to get doing anything, you have to download your own code onto it because it comes with the default program on the micro bit. And the code as supplied, a lot of the extensions it uses are all in Chinese. Uh, potentially, this is a shame because potentially the micro bit is a lot more user friendly to program using um, blocks of uh, commands rather than in C as you have to on the um, Elegoo Penguin bot. But you can see they both have the potential to do the uh, similar things. I mean, the dancing that the Penguin bot does, you could program into the generic robot and it also has um, uh, audio capability, although probably not as good quality as this. It probably isn't even polyphonic. What I've heard come out of the robot bit extension board speaker. Uh, so I hope that's useful. Thanks for watching. And I'll just leave you with the uh, two robots doing a little dance uh, recorded on the better mobile phone app. Um, now I don't have to be trying to control the robot at the same time using the um, app on the mobile phone.